Hi Gemini, welcome to your year ahead forecast with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much to all of you that are continued subbies and have helped me reach the 30,000 mark. I'm so, so truly grateful for it. If you would like to book a personal tarot reading with me, you can do so on the website address below. And if you would like to donate to the channel, we would be eternally grateful for it. You can do so on the web link below. So before we start, I would like to bless all of my decks with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise, and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So, Gemini, 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 let's see what the year 2019 has in store for you. Um, so, you'll, you'll recognise the format, but we're going to be doing these readings for uh, the month-by-month -month breakdown and then pull a final key for the year. So, in January, your first card out, the star card. Beautiful. So, this is going to be a year of hope, a year of optimism. But the word that I'm actually hearing are inner and... Um, ultimate growth and peace that's what I'm hearing from this that's what I'm feeling from it and it's kind of like what it feels like to me is this year this is what you're going to get so January you get a glimpse into your future you get a glimpse and an understanding and an idea of how different things can be for you how different 2019 can be to 2018 and probably to the rest of your life as well the future is here the future is bright it's optimistic you know the star card in you, you know in January is giving you the blessings of Aquarius which means this could be very well be the year where you find your tribe this could very well be the year where you start to connect with the right people where you start to dream bigger than you've ever dreamt before and you start to understand that actually by reaching out and networking in the right play in the right places as well as the right ways um, you can sync up with what you believe to be your co-created destiny um, I kind of feel that this is going to be a big year there's going to be some big choices is for you um you know even though the star card doesn't necessarily represent choice um I, but what i feel like is it's going to grow you you know 2019 is going to grow you and you know really change your your thoughts and your um your outlooks on everything there's going to be a lot of inner wisdom and inner growth as well so to clarify that you get the high priestess trust your intuition trust your hunches um, if you are invited anywhere in January, to, especially to anything that inv involves or revolves around a group of people or is something that's sort of, you know, you know, it's like the sort of thing where somebody says, oh, like, I could never imagine you, you, you go into something like that. Like, why are you going? If you're invited to something that is completely out of the box or totally dissociative to you, like in the respect that you know, it's not something that people would necessarily say that you were into or um, involved with, then you must, must go. Um, you know, your intuition is basically saying that secrets will be divulged to you this in the month of January. Absolutely. You're going to learn a lot from other people through your networking of other people. And also, you're going to learn a lot about social economics this year. And that's really exciting for you guys because you are, you know, Gemini is a social butterfly. So January looks like a really good month. It looks like a powerful month for you as well. There's going to be a lot of internal growth and wisdom, but there's also going to be a lot of, um, like I said, understandings and invites to social gatherings, but it's going to give you a really good idea of how social economics works. So February, the high priestess comes up again. So these two months, the intuition is going to be very, very heightened in January and February especially. Take note of what happens. Listen to your dreams. Be aware. It looks like in January and February as well, you're learning things. You're learning things that you, it's almost like, you know, for some of you, I feel like this is in your work situation and it's like, oh wow, I didn't realise all of this was going on behind the scenes. I didn't realise all of this was happening behind or beyond. It's almost like you get sort of the initiate, not even the initiation. It's like, the veil drops between you and what you didn't know and you know in February you're going to have this experience of like oh okay so that's what's been going on behind the scenes round the corner da -da 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 -da. you know fill in the blanks for yourself um, to clarify that you get the knight of swords so in, in, in February 
It's really important that you don't try to force information. Let it come to you. You're not, you don't have to go out there and seek it and wrest it from people. You know, you don't have to pull things. You don't have to be sneaky or snide or anything like that. Um, you know, in the month of February, let people divulge secrets to you. And more importantly, when they do, it's down to you to keep that knowledge to yourself. Obviously, if somebody's been harmed or whatever, then, you know, totally speak up and out. But if it's nothing to do with something like that, make sure that you can be a trusted secret keeper. That's going to be really, really important in February. Um, you know, you'll be given knowledge that you wouldn't necessarily be privy to and how you utilize that knowledge and whether you keep or don't keep the secrets is going to be a part of your test. Um, so, you know, pay attention to that, especially within the work arena or any kind of um, professional or academic, um, you know, vernacular, let's say. So March, you get the lover's card. This is beautiful because this is actually your card. The lover's card represents the sign of Gemini. So March is a powerful month for you and it's a powerful month for you because not only are you making decisions, but you're really starting to interact. You're really starting to assimilate the things that you've learned. You know, one of the things about the lover's card is yes, it represents choice, but it also represents the choice to collaborate. And that's the beauty of this. So you've got the double hit of the high priestess there. You've got the star card and the knight of wands and the lovers. So for the first three months of the year, you've really got this air energy going on and you're tapped into who you are to, you know, you're making good, wise decisions, but you're also assimilating every and, you know, every little bit of knowledge. You're going to be like a sponge for the first three months of the year where you're just taking stuff in, you know, constantly. Um, for those of you that are partnered, March is a really wonderful month. It's a really wonderful month for you to cement a relationship uh, or even get one, you know, revived if it's on the rocks or has been on the rocks for a while March is the time where you will start to see a change in that where you will start to really be able to assimilate some of the challenging lessons that you've learned and utilize them for the better um, also for those of you that are single March looks like a good month for you to get out there and flirt I mean you know you're a natural flirt anyway Gemini but um, <laughs> you know March is a good time for you to get out there and, and use that skill uh, to clarify you've got the king of Pentacles so uh, an earth sign male Taurus Capricorn Virgo and you know that's as a person steady hard working dependable you know uh, very um, does the numbers does things by the book the thing about the king of pentacles though is it also represents success and achievement and accomplishment and you know when you've got the lovers there this is like you're dedicating yourself to your own success you're dedicating yourself to your to the success of your relationship and it looks like a lot of you in march will either be making something more official so um you know if you have been seeing somebody you decide to go steady and say you know what we'll be boyfriend and girlfriend if you have been toying around with collaboration with somebody in business this is where you launch it and say to people yes you know what um, you know we're now a, a partnership in business and we're doing this going forward if you are boyfriend and girlfriend you'll be getting engaged if you're husband and wife you know this could very well be you choosing to invite a new person into the family you know in terms of a baby or, but it's definitely about bringing something together and taking it a step further than what it is it's that choice to collaborate and um, you know elaborate as well actually on what already is so april you get the full card beautiful so new things new places new people so almost like once you commit to this idea of taking something to the next step or you know really breathing life into it and saying right I'm going to do this I'm going to run with this it's like then new places new people you're called to travel as well you know in April I kind of feel like you'll be going places the first three months might be a bit slow or you know there'll be a lot going on on the internal level but out you know out in the practicality of it things might be moving slowly for you but the um the full card in April is basically saying yeah that there's going to be some really good things coming forward but there's also going to be a lot of changes there's also going to be a lot of things that are new you know you're welcoming brand new things into the fold brand new things into the world 
um, which is exciting, you know, let's see what the context may well be. And you get the Seven of Wands. So the Seven of Wands sees you defending yourself for something or it sees you defending something that you've put into motion or something that you believe. Now, the interesting thing is Sevens in terms of its numerology in the tarot is all about endurance. It's all about saying, right, I said I was gonna do this and I'm gonna stick up, you know, I'm gonna stick in with it. I'm gonna dig deep and I'm gonna do what I said I would do. Um, this month, you know, in that respect, new places, new things, new people. The interesting thing for me here is it almost feels to me like you're enticed or tempted to go a different route. Um, nobody can make the decision for you, but whatever you do do, if you've already, um, you know, committed yourself to something, stick with it. This is a year for you to be really honourable and honest, um, you know, trusting and true. And the reason I say that is because you started off with the star card and some of the taglines for that are um, truth, uh, you know, um, trust, innocence, all, all those kind of things. But April... It looks like a month where you are having to walk your talk. You know, you said you were gonna do something and April looks like the month where you're gonna to have to back that up with action instead of just speech. Um, so May, heading into birthday season, um, you get the strength card. So the strength card is basically, it represents the sign of Leo and it's asking you, what is your heart's desire? And it's basically saying that the month of May, you're gonna be reassessing and readdressing um, what it is that you've put yourself out there with, and more importantly, what it is that you, um, you know, not what it is, it's, it's more about like your physical health. Like in the month of May, you're really getting in touch with, you know, what is good for you and what isn't. And what I'm actually feeling from this as well is you'll be very sensitive to people. In the month of May, you'll be really kind of reassessing, reevaluating who builds you up and gives you energy, who feels like a drain, who makes you feel sensitive or agitated, and you'll be sorting through that and you'll be feeling it very, uh, very sensitively through your physical body, through your physical self. Uh, to clarify, you get the Hierophant. So yeah, this is interesting because the, the Hierophant is, is all about the structure, right? It's all about the status quo, doing things the right way. It's about, um, you know, governing bodies, officials, the establishment. And with the Strength card, this is basically talking about you building something physical for yourself. For a lot of you, I kind of feel like the month of May is where you're gonna say to yourself, I either feel really happy and settled here and I wanna stay, or I really feel unsettled and I don't want to be here anymore. Um, May is going to reveal a lot to you about how you feel about people and places, um, you know, and whether you want to be sort of attached to or aligned with them, you know. And I've got to say to you, Gemini, it looks like May will be the month where some alliances are either made or broken. Um, there will be no in between. So keep that in mind. Uh, June. So birthday season for real. Happy birthday to you. You get the chariot card. This is beautiful because it's about a victory, it's a success. The chariot card also is a very fast card. So June's gonna be over in a blip of an eye. You know, you 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 almost be like, okay, wow, another year has gone like it's a birthday. The, the chariot card actually represents the sign of cancer and therefore has links to the moon, which is interesting because you know, the moon is a cyclic being and at this time of the year, when it is your birthday, you tend to go through this period of, right, okay, that was the last year, what do I want for the year ahead? But the chariot card is basically saying that if you dig deep and you're willing to go for it and you're, you know, ready and willing to run, you can succeed. You know, there will be a few minor bumps along the way because the thing about the chariot, it moves so quickly that, you know, you need to hang on for dear life. One of the things that I love about the chariot card though is it's about steering with your will. So you win by, you know, by being true to yourself, but also by being honest, you know, and steering with the sheer force of your will, like sticking with the, Whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you put your name to, whatever it is that you, you go forward with, you must stick at it. That's what's important. Um, you know, that's how we win with the chariot card. To clarify, you've got the Ace of Swords. So May and June, there's definitely something coming to an end 
but there's also a birth of some sort as well it's like something you know it literally as one door closes another one another one opens because ace of swords is the end of something for sure but it's also an ace so it's about beginnings as well contracts being signed um you know movement definitely lots of movement happening in may and june um you know and i'm talking about movement of place about you going or being somewhere else um so you know that's really really awesome but uh yeah be honest may and june be honest about everything that you think and everything that you feel because by being so you will get so much more out of it i promise you uh july you get the death card so you know this is interesting isn't it as one door closes another one opens so may you're really getting to grips with what makes you feel what and who make you feel what so you know like i said who builds you up who brings you down who gives you energy who makes you feel safe who doesn't make you feel safe all of that stuff alliances formed and broken in the month of may june um some successes some yes okay i can finally put my name down i can finally put my uh, pen to paper and this is going to happen um then you get the death card in july which is basically saying that as you're closing certain doors behind you transformation is going to take place the month of july is going to be a really interesting one because it's going to see you asking yourself not just what your heart desires but what are your deepest desires what are your truest motivations in july you'll be asking yourself those big things and you will be acting from that place it's almost as if after these previous two months after these probably four previous months actually it's almost like you're saying to yourself right okay now that i've had these experiences i'm older i'm wiser i'm stronger and therefore I'm going to be honest and open about what I want and what I need. But more importantly, I'm going to make sure that I am OK. I'm going to make sure that I get what I need from, you know, from life, from work, from the world, from people. Um, you know, and you'll be speaking your truth more than ever. Um, some people, you know, might be shocked by that. Let's see what the clarifier is you get the justice card so yeah there's definitely some things being signed here there's definitely it's it's you know it's interesting because like i said some things are breaking apart and, and separating and some things are becoming more solid and more concrete um, you know, and the Justice card represents signing on the dotted line more so than the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is making the decision to sign. Uh, the Justice card is doing the signing. It's the paperwork. It's the legal documents. It's the, you know, the the final decision of yes, I'm going to do this and yes, I'm going to commit to it. Um, so July is a really interesting month because it's like you're committing more to yourself than ever before. Um, you know, and you're speaking your truth and you know, speaking your truth literally, justice speaking up and out justice is about the truth you know about what it actually is as opposed to what we would like it to be or what it possibly looks like August temperance beautiful so temperate August is great because it means you get some semblance of peace it means that you you know you can finally look back on the last one two three four four months and say right okay whew, yeah it's been you know it's been a time but actually what have i learned from it there's been some really amazing things that i've pulled from it there's been some amazing stuff that i've learned about you know one two three four five um yeah so you know there's been some amazing stuff that i've learned about myself i've done a lot of changing so you know usually we say you know oh, over the course of the last two years or whatever it's almost like you're going to go through you know six years worth of evolution in the space of four months you know some of this stuff is going to be testing i'm not going to lie to you some relationships will be tested what survives will be amazing what doesn't is what needs to go the um temperance card then in august like i said it, it's almost like it gives you a break it gives you a chance to look back and say right okay i've learned all of this and now i need to bring it all together now i need to make something with it so to clarify you get the magician card look at that um this is really interesting because the magician card is amazing it's a really powerful card it's you know it's about somebody that's at the height of their game somebody that is respected learned qualified 
um, somebody that's extremely powerful. This looks like a, a possibly a very spiritual person as well. And the reason I say that is because temperance has links to Sagittarius, which is all to do with higher philosophy. It's also to do with law. It's also to do with higher learning, education, but it's also about expansion and understanding and spirituality and therefore it's also about religion you know and the magician card is somebody that is very powerful so it feels to me like not only are you getting in touch with who you really are not only are you having peace but you're combining all of this experience that you've had and you're coming out of it a much stronger person a much stronger being but also on top of that as if it wasn't enough for august it looks like you're going to be getting into some sort of spiritual practice you will be dedicating yourself and saying right okay you know what i might have lived my whole life you know you could be 45 or 50 next year it's like you know i've had my whole life where i haven't really believed in anything i don't you know you could be younger than that you could be older than that you know it doesn't really matter what your age is to be fair but it's almost like you you'll have gone your whole life with maybe not giving too much thought to spirituality or religion and in the month of august it's going to be like wow okay i get this sense that there is something bigger out there and there's something that i want to be um, aligned with or attached to lots and lots of personal metamorphosis taking place in August um, you know but for your highest and it sees you getting some sort of recognition as well you know it's almost like your name is put out there for, for people to see but in a really good way so September you get the hermit card so September is going to be a time of sort of drawing back September is going to be a time where you're like okay you know what I need to recharge the batteries and you're saying to yourself okay so what can I do and you know off the back of this you know learning in this spirituality and this newfound awareness of self it's almost like you're going to say right well I want to go deeper with that now but I need to recharge my batteries so whether it's that you're taking a holiday uh, you know whether you decide to go on a retreat or you know anything like that but the month of September that's what you're doing you're dedicating yourself to making uh, time and space for yourself dedicating time you know for yourself to recharge the batteries and whatever that means to you however you choose to do it it will be important and evident to you the two of cups beautiful so for some of you I have to say this you will be reevaluating your relationships um, it's almost like the reason I say that because the hermit card is about searching deep and eliminating what doesn't need to be there it's also about going within or withdrawing ourselves um, so therefore recharging your batteries for some of you this is traveling with the partner to have some time away so that you can just chill relax for others of you this is you reevaluating and reassessing your relationship you know who you're with do they suit you? Have they grown with you? Are you growing while you're with them? What does that mean for you? Uh, do you see yourself with them, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years down the line? You know, September's a really sort of intrinsic month for you because you're looking really deep into the way that things are and asking yourself if you're happy with that. So October the tower card so yeah something comes to a finite end it might not be a relationship it could be a business partnership it could be uh, you know you and a friendship it could be anything like that but relationships in general will be coming under scrutiny for you in september and it will be you doing that um october then sees something you know finalized you know a, a line drawn under something something comes to an end and you will have some kind of startling realization. October is going to be a month that really opens your eyes to a lot of things um, and really kind of shakes you out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, it's October is going to be a month where it's like, wake up, pay attention, what is actually happening as opposed to what you think is happening or, you know, what somebody is selling you. Um, the judgment card as well. <laughs> so, yeah, you will be readdressing certain things because the judgment card is always a blast from the past right it's something that comes back to to be looked over to be worked through worked on and then finally released 
um, and October and then the fact that you've got this with the tower card this says to me that there's going to be a finite end to something and there will be no way back after this so once certain decisions are made and certain conversations are had that's going to be it you will go your separate ways and there won't be any coming back from it um, and I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing I just feel that something comes to an end and it will be a final end uh, you know and with the judgment card it's some kind of relationship you know whether that's friendship whether it's you know marriage boyfriend girlfriend whatever it's some kind of relationship comes to a close comes to an end but it will be after a period of really looking at things to understand them it's not going to be a decision that will be made overnight okay so <clears throat> November the moon card observing the past trying to understand how you you know how this situation not how it happened but you know understand where you where you can go from there because the moon card sees you looking over your past and very often when I see the moon card for people especially after those two cards this is like looking at the past for what it actually was taking the rose tinted glasses off and saying okay well you know what, I'm not going to glamorise it and I'm not going to glamorise them and also I'm not going to paint myself to be a hero or a martyr. It is what it is. It's almost like November, you know, where the moon card usually brings confusion. I actually think for you it's going to shed some light on the dark spaces and it's going to help you understand, okay, right, this is the experience that I've had. I don't necessarily like it. I don't want it to, you know, to mark or mar me. But equally, I, I want to know you know what actually was it so this kind of sees you looking over the past to understand some stuff and then to clarify nine of swords okay this is interesting because the moon card is 18 one and eight gives you nine uh nine and nine so you've got a double hit of nine energy which is a culmination it's a closing point it's a you know clearing the deck so that you can start again the nine of swords is not great um you know it's it's a card of worry stress anxiety and it's usually a lot of the stuff that's up in here you know things that we're hyping up out of proportion um the fact that you've got this with the moon card there'll be lots of night work going on you know for a lot of you you will be up burning the midnight oil um you know right in uh, you know reading researching it's almost like when everybody else is still and asleep you're up and you're doing things so it's not necessarily just worry stress and strife it, you know it's also you doing a night shift you know whether that's actually going to work nights or whether it's like I said you're doing things at night that most people would usually do in the day um, but yeah November looks like a very active month in the mind and then finally December you get the Empress what a beautiful card to finish on because this is laying the fertile ground you know the the Empress is basically it's the beautiful environment it's the wonderful idea it's the sharing the caring it's the vibrancy it's the life you know the essence of what it is to be beauty beautiful and what it is to be um to enjoy things do you know what i mean like and you know just this, this is a great card for december actually after everything that happens sort of in well let's say september through november um you know this is a lovely card to have because it gives you some not only peace but it also gives you some beauty and some understanding and some enjoyment you know it's almost like december you can just kick back and and enjoy and have fun for a lot of you you'll probably be abroad for what is the holiday season um it looks like you'll you know you'll be reveling in the sunshine while everybody else is freezing their butts off and you know doing all of the christmas stuff uh, and then to clarify you get the king of swords so you are it's interesting because i said about clearing the decks you know here in november and then you've got the fertile ground to start again on and then you get the king of swords air sign male uh you know gemini libra or aquarius somebody that's really smart very learned really knows their stuff this person is either helping you with an idea and bringing it into action or they are um or you know or they'll they'll support you in some sort of way or they will you know they'll maybe invest in you or it could be anything like that and it's also about you using your mind so in december after everything that you've experienced in the previous two months well three months let's say your it's almost like your your mind is like this amazing fertile 
you know, machine almost that is now ready to think fast and hard and bring in some amazing ideas. You know, in December, keep a pen and pad handy because ideas are gonna come and th come thick and fast. And also a lot of really good, very lucrative ideas will come forward for you as well. So, you know, all in all, it looks to be, you know, a, a fairly decent year, but a fairly mixed bag as well. There are definitely some challenges here, but it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a very powerful year for you. Um, it's going to be a year of personal and inner transformation. And it's going to be a year where you really um, start to understand who you are and what you're able to offer people, um, you know, and what you're able to offer the world at large. And I kind of feel like you'll be coming more and more into your own this year. You know, there'll be so much that you're doing and saying, it's almost like you're refusing you know, I'm I'm not going to be the the silent person anymore. I'm not going to be the um, the person that you know just kind of kicks back and observes or whatever. You know, or or speaks frivolously. It's like this year you decide that you're really gonna when you speak. It's not just going to be about the fun and the good time. It's going to be to be heard so that people understand who you are and what you're capable of. Your key to the year. Bam the sun card look at that so even with all of the challenges even with all of the personal growth even with all of the understandings and wisdom that you will gain through certain challenges you get the sun card as the key to your year which basically says fun joy happiness optimism um blessings ultimate blessings from the universe you know be a person of your word be honest be open be forthright you know say what you think say what you feel and really say what you think and feel um anything that you you say you're going to do do it be a person of integrity this year and you will achieve the sun card um gemini have an amazing year i'll see you very soon for more videos take care oh and i wish you an abundance of love light peace prosperity and abundance itself have an amazing year and i'll see you very soon